Out of the book of St. Matthew, if you open your Bible to St. Matthew chapter 17. St. Matthew chapter 17. It's so good to see during the summertime most pastors experience attendance drop. And uh, but we want to commend those who have kept the faith and kept coming. I know about vacations and all of that. You have a right to that. But uh, certainly, whenever you can, be faithful to God. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 17. And let us not forget Brother Wayne. Yes, sir. Uh, I see you, uh, I'm told. So let's pray for okay. Brother Wayne. Uh, that God will <laughs> give him his hand. I'm going to read one verse, verse 20. Can you have it say amen? amen? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can tell that mountain, you better get out of my way. And he will obey because nothing shall be impossible with God. I'm going to talk about faith that moves mountains. Yes, sir. Short, I would say, mountain movers. Mountain. It is said that in, in October 1998, an edition was written in, the, in my reading, the Baltimore Sun, and said there was a story about a mountain. And the mountain was called Mount McKinley. It is known to be one of the highest mountains on the North American continent. Mm -hmm. And my research proved that a mountain expedition was sent up there to give them high, let them know how high that mountain was. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. And Lord has said that they fabricated their figures. In other words, they lied. <laughs> they never really completely climbed that mountain, but they were to numbers. And the mountain, in fact, after factual research, is over 20,000 feet high. And it, that mountain, the climbing it was so hard that not too many people have gotten there because it tells me it's a hard mountain to climb. All right, all right. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. After reading that, I found out the realization that that whichever mountain you look at, they all are hard to climb. And I can ask me any of the hills is hard to climb. Yeah. Even there's a story of, in the May documentary there, was, documentary, there was a story of people who were trapped on a mountain, Mount Everest. Yes. And they got crowded up there because of many reasons. And storms came, some died because the mountain was so high. 29,000 feet in my, my research. I'm not that small, but I do know that. <laughs> That's why mountains have long become a symbol. Right, right. A symbol of hardship. Yeah, yeah, and a symbol of difficulty. Yes, mountains have long represented their effort problems to be solved. Obstacles to overcome. We think they are mountains. Mountains has come in our life, even as crosses that we have to 
carry, mountains, mountains, birds that we have to bear. Am I making sense? Mountains remind us of trouble that we have to triumph over. Mountains remind us of difficulties that we have to deal with sometimes. Yes, mountains are problems in our lives. Death is a mountain. Those of us who lost a loved one, you know, there are some things you just can't get over. It just takes time to yes, overcome difficulties. And if death, if you've been there, you understand what I'm talking about. Am I making sense? Oh, yeah. Sometimes sickness always causes a mountain in our lives. We, we remember, as we mentioned, sickness, brother, uh, wedding, brother Ozan, and I don't know the name of many, but those are some that reach out Eureka, and I know that they have mountains. Yeah. Pastor Eric, Reverend Eric, called me another day, he was at home. Yes, sir. And then yes, the next day, he was at the hospital. And it has been a growing calm. And don't you tell me there is not a mountain in that family's life. Yeah. And some of y'all have been there. Am I making sense? Yes, he said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Trouble, or sometimes mountains. Sometimes family crisis is a mountain. And trying to get the husband and wife to act like civilized people. Yeah. It becomes a mountain. You get the husband straight and the wife start acting crazy. You get her yes, all right and the yes. husband start back. And I think I'm going to shut up on that. Yeah. Unpaid bills are mountains. Going to clean out all your bills before you go on vacation. And Brother Brown, when you get back, when you open the fuel box, everything fall out and they all be. Some of them look good, some of us think that I I got I have I have people uh, I guess it, that British men want to want to send me some of them get along and I look at the envelope and it has the color that like a government check. And I get happy for a second. Now I know we can get happy. Yeah. But all these things become mountains yes, in our lives. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Sometimes we have rebellious children yeah. in our lives that cause the mountain men to be too high to climb. Yeah. And some of us just say, I just give up. I just don't know what to do. It's just oh, because we have been uh, trouble with our children. We get little giant. Straight and soon start acting crazy. <laughs> and anybody who have two children, you know that you have mountains. Yes, and it ain't man. Yes, but all it says for those of us have one child, you still have mountains. Am I making any sense? Yeah, there's still mountains. The truth of the matter is, life is filled with mountains. Yes, 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 sir. But Jesus said, my brothers and sisters, thank God for the word of God. Jesus said that you can have faith of a mustard seed. Oh, yeah. You can look at your mouth and say, you better get out of my way. Yes, sir. That's it. Yes, sir. Move mountain. Yeah. Right. Jesus said that right now. And give you a little, little back story of it. And I don't want to keep it too long. Uh, but my name got me through the three sermons. So I guess I'll sleep and see you. Now. I'll make it <laughs> but let me tell you this. The back story of all that. And, uh, some of y'all Bible scholars, you know, Jesus and his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, was coming down quickly from a mountain. And when they went down, came down from that mountain, they heard a commotion down at the foot. Yeah. And what had happened, what had happened is but, <coughs> that uh, a man brought his son, uh -huh. and his son was demonic, he yeah. had a demon. And he, he took him to, he looked for Jesus, and Jesus wasn't there, Paul. So he said, well, I'll go to his assistants. I'll go to his disciples and see can they cast this demon out of my, my son. And, and they took him to the disciples, but they could not move that demon. Oh, yeah. And Sister Simmons said it caused a political, and most of us see what's going on too, the political uproar. 
because the scribes were around trying to see what they can do to tear Jesus down. Yeah. And they stepped right into the midst and said, ah, you're Jesus, boy. Yeah. And you can't cast this demon out. And they began to argue. And Jesus came down and said, what's going on? Yeah. And let me paraphrase it. What's, what's happening down there? And they said, Master, and the man said, Master, I brought my son. So that his demon, this, this demon can be brought out of him, but your disciples could not cast them out. Yeah. Jesus took care of business. And when they went back home the evening, uh, 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 went back home in the evening, and the disciples said, now look, Master, uh, uh, why we couldn't do what you did? Yeah. And Jesus said, if you just had faith of a little mustard seed, verse 20, if you just had faith of a mustard seed, oh, yeah. my brothers, you probably could have done it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now in the book of Mark, it said, some things come by fasting and praying. Yeah. But in the book of Matthew, it said, if you had faith of a mustard seed, you could have said to that mountain, that demon, demon, you better get out. And he would have jumped out. But you don't have faith. Matthew talks about that mustard seed. I want to talk about faith for a few moments and talk about mustard seed. Uh, it's often illustrated about the mustard seed. And if you just have a little bit, you can move mountains. God can use it to accomplish great things, but let me stop here. I don't want to get you confused, but God didn't stop at just saying a little faith. Yeah. He's not talking about inside. He's talking more. He's talking mostly about the power in that seed. Because remember one time he told the disciples, oh ye of little faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the size, it's the power. It's the potency, it's the power that's in you. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. You see some little old short folks can pull a giant down on a second? Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah, like that. that's like but Jesus is not promoting littleness. That's right. The mustard seed has power. Yeah. And if you know anything about a mustard seed, oh, I, yeah. I try to copy off Pastor Ryan. Those, those little seeds up there, they're smaller than a watermelon seed. But they have much power. Now, I'm not a cook, but I think they, that's where you get your mustard green. And in the east, those mustard seeds can grow tall. Yes, just a little bit. And Jesus said, you just had that real faith, and your faith will increase. You can look at that tall mountain and tell it to be moved, and it must be moved. It's something about, amen, something about mustard seed. Number one, mustard seed illustrates to us that uh, it takes dedication yes, to realize what mustard seed can do. It takes dedication to realize what your faith can do, how it can move mountains. A seed requires time to germinate and finally break through the soil to do what he has to do. Yeah. Now y'all got to hear me this, because there's a lot of disappointed Christians in here. A lot of Christians have doubt and confuse you because they think they have faith and they think God's going to help you before you get up off your knees. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time yeah. for God to move yeah. the mountain. Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry to make you feel bad, but sometimes you just don't have a few more difficult. But neither sometimes we're going to have a little more confusion, a little more problem before God come and rescue you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. When you just wait on the Lord, he'll be there. Can I get a witness? I just want to hear a good amen for nine things. I may not come back here. I want to hear a good old amen. Won't he show up when you hold up? Faith may not always change your circumstances, but tell us it, but it'll change your inner landscape. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's not how you look, yes, sir. but what is going on in your heart. Oh, 
That's how faith works, my brothers and sisters. Faith is something you can't see. Now, faith is the substance of being hoped for. Yeah. 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 And the evidence of faith not seen. It's not always what's on the outside that matters. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. It's not all what matters, but it's what's on the inside that really makes the difference. There's a story of an army general, and he led an Italian army. And he took that army, James, and, and uh, they were marching, and all of a sudden they came upon some great elks, some great mountains. And all of a sudden the army soldiers, so slaughtered, they became, they saw the mountain, they began shaking. And they became rebellious and said we can't take that mountain. They almost wanted to walk away from the army general. But that army general looked at them and he said, come here, listen to me. What I want you to do, I want you to forward march. We see no mountain. March forward. We see no mountain. Oh, I know what you said, not saying they're crazy. They can see that mountain. March forward. We see no mountain. Mm. And as he got through standing and proclaiming that it's not what you see, just march forward. They conquered that mountain and won that war. Yeah. I'm here to say, Matthew, I'm not in Italy, so I'm going to tell you, sometimes you got a mountain, you got to march forward. Yes, sir. There is no mountain. March forward. You don't see no problem. Yeah. March forward. There is no hardship yes, sir. in your life. Yes, sir. My sister, sometimes, and I've seen people, not only my family, come and tell somebody what somebody said. Uh, they begin to talk about the business side. They say this, and you ain't got this, and you got that. You go, you going to this and that. And I heard the person turn around, Doris, and say, I ain't got no problem. That's their problem. <laughs> It's their problem, but it's their problem. Am I making sense? Right. Sometimes you got to look at your problem and say, that's somebody else's problem. If I ain't got no job, it's the HR's problem. Yeah. They don't know who they, they don't know who they not lying yet. You got to speak to your mind, man. Yeah. You hear me? And say, there is no problem. You must say, follow more. I don't see no cancer. Forward march. I don't see I don't have no job. Forward march. I don't see my hands. Let them hit on. Because I'm going to go on. March forward. March forward. I can only say that, Paul, because Jesus can change your inner. He can change the inside. Do you hear me? That's why the Bible says, Corinthians, but we walk by faith. Yes, sir. Not by sight. Oh, yeah. Anybody hear me this morning? Faith is our outward sense that make our inward sense very clear. There's another thing about faith. Faith will enlarge your possibilities. Yeah. Faith gives you more solutions. To your problem. Yes, uh, and I know I ain't talking to the walls. Because <laughs> this church is still a folk with power. Yeah, and don't feel bad think that's all right. I've had my share of ups and downs. Yeah. I've had to cry. I had to, to walk the floor at the night. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. But let's talk it. Let's talk it out. Let's get out of this thing. All right? Yeah. Number one, you got to realize that things can give you more. It, uh, 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 possibilities. It enlarges your options. Yeah. I know a little boy as a football player. I know about at my age now, Brother Brown, I'm a senior citizen, so sometimes I can keep myself. So, <laughs> when my son, you know, I used to play football and, and being the biggest guy in, in the high school, they always called me Big Book. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, when I get the ball, everybody wants to tap a Big Book. And when I fall down, one tackle might have gotten it, but the whole other nine guys come fall on the big book. And I learned the solution to this. They could have smothered me. Yeah. Yeah. But I push legs around and knock heads over until I get me some air. Yeah. I'm 
until the ref come and get them off a of big book. And somebody, sometimes God will just give you a little ass. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody will give me a little I may not be back to preach to you, but I'm going to do it while I'm here. I want to tell you, God will give you some air. Yeah. So you can make it because he's a God of possibility. Yeah. God of solutions. Hello. Yeah. A problem is only a problem if there are no solutions. Yes, sir. You got God on your life, you got solutions. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody ought to say amen. Yes. But if you don't have solutions, God gonna take care of everything. Because God is the God of solutions. Yes. Brother Grace, let me give you an example. Israel, no solution. Yes. In bondage in Egypt, no solution. Yes. <laughs> Had no hope. No solution. Slave, the turn to slave in Egypt. No solution. But God is a God of possibility. God looked at him and said, that's all right. I've already formed a red sea. And I'm going to solve the solution by turning him to the red sea. Now, if you, if a lot of y'all don't have no faith, God will say, well, red, where are you going to go to red sea? There ain't no green there for that. But God said that's the Red Sea. Yeah. If God got a solution for you, don't worry about the grid. Worry about God. Yeah. Somebody ought to hear me this morning. Yeah. And when they went to the Red Sea, James, do you hear me? When they went to the Red Sea, no bridge there. Yeah. No engineers to build a bridge. On, yeah. No time for them to bring the steel in. God said, march on. How yeah. am going to march on? What solution? You want me to walk in the water? I can't swim. March on.
If I were down in Columbus, the preacher said, yeah. one Sunday morning, yeah. he got up. Yeah. God had a solution. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. God will make a way out of no way. Yeah. God had a solution on the sea. Yeah. Master, does thou carry it? That we carry yeah. yeah. Brown, he was sleep, but he had a solution. Yeah. He got up and said, peace, peace. be still. Oh, yeah. I'm going on a jump now. Yeah. The last thing faith will do. Yeah. Faith will connect you yeah. All right. to the God of the mountain. Yes, sir. Faith connects us yes, sir. to the God of the mountain. Yes, sir. We are sure that our mountain will be moved. And I hate to say this, y'all, but tell me to say it. I wish Donna Ross was a missionary. Because she said what I want to say. But Sister Ross wasn't a missionary, but she said, ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no rivers wide enough. Ain't no valleys low enough. For me to get to you. Yeah. But I want to tell you, should never Ross, this is what I said. Yeah. 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 Ain't no mountain high enough. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no valley low enough. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no river wide enough yeah. Yeah. to keep God from getting to you. Yeah. God will move the mountain. Yeah. Don't you move the mountain. Don't have anybody in the church. Yeah. When you are hurting, yeah. he will heal us. Oh, yeah. When you're weak, yeah. he will strengthen us. Yeah. When we are confused, yeah. he will guide us. Yeah. When we are lonely, yeah. he will comfort us. When we are lost, well, he will direct us. Yeah. God will take care of us. Yeah. Keep on turning. Yeah. I'll see you sometime. Yeah. But keep on climbing. The rough side of the mountain. Yes, sir. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. James, there are two sides to this mountain. Yeah. There's a smooth side. Yeah. And there's a rough side. Yeah. Everybody in the church want to go up the smooth side. Because you ain't got no problem. Yeah. But let me tell you, you can't yeah. climb a smooth side of the mountain. You need the rough side. Yeah. You need to drag over there to hold on to you. Yeah. You need your problems to make you better. Yeah. 